Hey guys, Rarity Gamer here. So today I wanted to do a video on um, hardware design between the PlayStation and Xbox. Um, I like watching teardown videos of uh, gaming consoles and channels that do portable laptops out of gaming consoles and uh, you know one-handed controllers for those that need them and whatnot. And I was also a long-time repairer of Xbox 360's last gen, because tons of my friends had them die on them, and I used to buy them for cheap and then f try to fix them, but I used to never get them going for longer than a couple of days, and then I'd have to tinker with them again, so I, I ended up with like a stack of them in my bedroom, and I used to just swap them out every time one would red ring and I'd have to fix them again. So when I was watching these teardowns of the PS4, Xbox One, and the PS3, I was like completely blown away to see that uh, the PlayStations don't have heat sinks. And that was what I dealt with the most on the 360s. I was familiar with like all the different versions between the arcade and the elite and how the, they kind of had an evolution and they added a copper attachment onto the side of the heat sink. And so I saw that the PlayStations literally don't have this and the chip is, um, you know, stuck with the silver paste straight to the thin RFI EMI shielding. And that's it. And then you add on top of that the internal power supply, which everyone you know talks about in terms of a convenience matter, but really think about it as a technical feat. It takes up something like a quarter of the space inside the unit <coughs> and adds all the heat. It's just insane. And then, you know, and then there's just things about the Xbox One. It's like, the heat sink is massive. It's got all this copper on it. Immediately, I got, I thought of the analogy that it's like an American muscle versus a luxury import because the Xbox just goes for, you know, straight muscle to get the job done. And you can see that through all the design of the hardware. Um, and then there's things that just don't make sense. Like, I don't get why there's no internal... Come on. This rain is killing me. I don't get why there's no uh, internal hard drive upgrade because the thing is massive. How they can fit a 360 slim style eject slot onto the side is just beyond me. So I think from a hardware standpoint, you just have to acknowledge the advances that Sony has. Um, the, the system alone is more power hungry, watts wise. So it is essentially doing more work. Right now, the battle for my bedroom, for getting a second console, would be which console I can fit upright and have DLNA support. Xbox might be winning that battle. I might have to find some way to put it on a nightstand below. I'm really, really tired of the three uh, PS3 and the having as the, the alternate. Although I was playing Uncharted with the DualShock 4, and after a while I was just like, "Oh man, how is this not? How is there not a collection for this? They've got to come up with a collection." Like this holiday, I could totally go for 
uncharted collection. Oh, whoa! I don't think I could drive in the cockpit right now. It's tracked. Whoa, no. Well, guys, tell me what you what games you're excited for coming up this year. What do you think Sony's going to do for this holiday? Are they going to go Ratchet and Clank? I don't know. They can support themselves solely on that. Uncharted Collection. Don't they have a... Uh, is, it, is it Gorillas? Gorilla? Do they have something open world coming up? I guess nothing that I've announced is going to come out this holiday, so it's hard to say. But in the end, we still got all the multi-plat superiority. Am I going to be able to catch up and at least take one spot? I wish I could, and I don't think I am. Anyways, rate, favorite, and subscribe. Let, you know, let, let me know what you guys think.